Hi guys, Zerozone here. Today we're going to see how the new Blackmagic Pocket 4K stacks up against the Ursa Mini Pro from Blackmagic Design, which is five times more expensive. In this comparison, I'll mostly be talking about image quality, but I'll also quickly go through differences in ergonomics, connectivity, media, and audio. Please note that Blackmagic Design did not pay me or ask me for this video. I have purchased both cameras myself, so this is a brutally honest real-world comparison based on personal experience. So let's get going and start with number one, which is image quality. So both cameras have a rolling shutter sensor, the Osa Mini Pro has a Super 35 sensor and can shoot in 4.6K up to 60fps whereas the Pocket 4K has a smaller 4 3rd sensor and can shoot uh, Ultra HD up to 60fps. The Osa Mini Pro has 15 stops of dynamic range versus 13 stops of dynamic range for the Pocket 4K. So in order to compare the two sensors, I took both cameras side by side in many different environments. I shot at the exact same settings on both cameras except for the aperture which was sometimes slightly adjusted since um, the pocket just looks a tad brighter. I like to say that this test is totally unscientific and it's actually hard to compare two cameras just judging by tripod shots. Um, but what I found was that the Ultra HD image quality is very close on both cameras um, and at least much closer than the previous pocket camera compared to the Ursa Mini Pro. The two of them were very hard to match. On some shots we can feel the difference in dynamic range which sometimes makes the pocket look a bit more video than film but I think it's not a huge gap between the two cameras. I personally find it very easy to color match the two cameras in post-production, even in Lumetri and without using any color checker. Of course using a color checker is much better but sometimes you just don't have enough time or the possibility to actually do it. I also think the Pocket looks sharper than the Ursa Mini Pro which could be due to the speed booster. So my opinion is that at ISO 200 the images are very similar and when you reach the second ISO gamma curve at ISO 1250 it's different. Um, we can see that uh, from this point the Pocket 4K has a bit more saturation, increased contrast and boosted highlights but it's still fairly okay to match them. For instance, here's a slight color grade on the Pocket 4K and now the Ursa Mini Pro. Playing with the two cameras, I think that when you do not have a properly lit environment, the low light capabilities of the Pocket 4K are much better than the Ursa Mini Pro. And I hope some sort of um, dual ISO sensor upgrade uh, will come for the Ursa Mini cameras and this would be really amazing. Number 2. Ergonomics so the most striking difference between the two cameras is uh, the weight and size since they are not designed for the same purpose. Uh, so an Ursa Mini Pro is much harder to put on a gimbal or a steady cam. Both cameras share the same fantastic touch OS. I think there's a really nice harmony between the cameras um, on this matter. The Ursa Mini Pro has built-in high quality ND filters which I think is a huge advantage over the Pocket 4K. After a year of intensive use I think that the LCD on the Ursa Mini Pro is too small and too poor quality so this camera is really designed to be used with a viewfinder or a, an external monitor such as the Video Assist 4K and that's what we always ended up doing. On the Pocket 4K it's a completely different story. Its LCD is probably its uh, biggest strength aside from image quality. It's big, it's bright, it's color accurate 
I think it'd be pretty useless to attach an external monitor on this camera unless you're doing some vlogging or if you want to see yourself while you're shooting because um, the LCD on the Pocket 4K cannot be tilted as opposed to the LCD on the Osa Mini Pro which has a 180 degree tilt angle. The Osa Mini Pro can hold a V-mount battery that can last for four hours, while the Pocket 4K LPE6 batteries will only last 45 minutes. It's worth noting that both cameras have a startup time. It's generally about three to four seconds on the Pocket 4K and four to six seconds on the Osa Mini Pro. Number three, connectivity. So the overall connectivity is much better on the Osa Mini Pro. You have two SDI outputs, one of which can output 4K at 10 bits, whereas on the Pocket 4K, you only have one full size HDMI output, which is only 1080p at 10 bits. The Pocket 4K is going to be harder to use on live productions since as opposed to the Osa Mini Pro, Osa Broadcast and all the other Blackmagic Studio cameras, there is no SDI in input, which means no preview program tolly, light, and you cannot control remotely its color correction unit uh, by SDI. There is no LAN C port on the Pocket 4K, so if you want to start and stop the recording remotely, you have to use the Bluetooth protocol. Both cameras support timecode inputs, so on the Osa Mini Pro it's through a BNC cable at the back and on the Pocket 4K uh, it will automatically grab the timecode signal that comes into the 3.5mm uh, microphone jack input. When it comes to internal audio, this is how the two cameras compare. This is how the internal microphones of the Osa Mini Pro sound like. This is the internal sound of the Pocket 4K. And number four, media and codecs. The Osa Mini Pro definitely wins here. Um, it can record on two CFAS cards, one after the other, on two SD cards, one after the other. On the Pocket, it can record on one SD card and then on one CFAS card, one after the other. By this, I mean that both cameras do not feature simultaneous recording on two cards at the same time. The Pocket 4K can also record to an external SSD using the USB Type-C interface, which is not the case with the Ursa Mini Pro. Both cameras can record RAW or ProRes, but only the Ursa Mini Pro can record ProRes 4444 or ProRes 4444XQ um, in this uh, different color space. It's worth noting that on the Pocket 4K, uh, you have the possibility to burn a lot directly into the recorded footage, which is practical when you have to deliver footage to um, a customer who does not want to uh, cut a grade. So which is better, Osa Mini Pro or Pocket 4K? Well, I think the Osa Mini Pro is better in most aspects but not by much, and this is the thing. I personally prefer the image quality of the Osa Mini Pro, um, except in low light where the Pocket 4K uh, shines a lot. And I think it's two cameras that serve two different purposes. I'll continue using both cameras, um, the Osa Mini Pro for every tripod or shoulder shot, and the Pocket 4K for Vernon S or POV or slider uh, shots. I'm really glad they match so well and I think they really form an awesome couple. So this is it for this comparison, I hope you liked it. I am very far from an expert, so if you wish to correct me on some technicalities or share your own experience uh, comparing the two cameras, feel free to leave a comment below. To finish with, I'd really like to thank you for your amazing support on the previous video. Um, I really appreciate it and I'll be making more videos soon. So um, thanks again and see you soon.